Remember when I started this uh, set of videos about different series, one of the things that I said that these series are very powerful for is making approximations of different functions that maybe aren't real easy to approximate by hand. Uh, so one of the examples I gave was, you know, normally in a pre-cal class, we would take the sine of 75 by breaking it up into the sine of 30 plus 45. 30 plus 45 is 75, and would use the trig sum identity to try to figure out the exact value. Um, but obviously, that's going to be really complicated to try to find some kind of combination of trig identities to find the sign of, you know, 61.23 or something like that. So it turns out you can actually use these series, and in usually only about four or five terms of these series, to get a pretty close approximation. A computer can do, you know, 10 or 12, uh, or however many. Uh, terms of these series that you need and get an accurate representation that really goes out to as many decimal places as needed. So just real quick here I wanted to show you, for example, uh, if I wanted to estimate uh, e to the first power, okay, uh, the e to the x function of course is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on. Um, if I want to find e to the first, I'm just substituting in 1 for x, and so that's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 1 squared over 2 factorial plus 1 cubed over 3 factorial plus 1 to the fourth over 4 factorial, uh, and so on. And actually, I'm going to write this out, uh, I think I did this out to... 1 over 5 factorial, uh, I think I went out to 1 over 6 factorial. Anyway, um, so what is that? That's uh, seven terms there, okay? And if you calculate that, you get approximately 2.7169, okay? Uh, e is approximately 2.718. So you can see out to the hundredths place already, uh, we have an accurate representation of, of e to the first power. Uh, if you want e squared, you could substitute in a 2 for each of these values. Uh, if you wanted 5e to the third, uh, you would be putting in a 3 for x, and then you'd be taking your result and you'd be multiplying it by 5. Okay, so lots of really quick ways to generate lots of different values. Okay, uh, let's try one of the trig functions. So um, I'm going to do one that everybody knows just to show you how accurate this is. And, and the accuracy of this is, is just unbelievable. So um, these are actually designed uh, to be done using radian measures, just so you know. Um, so if I wanted to find sine of 30 degrees, I could convert that over to radians. Uh, let's say that I wanted to find sine of 30 degrees, which is really pi, sine of pi over 6. Okay, now we all know what that is. Uh, it should be equal to 1 half or I'm gonna, um, 0 0.5. But all I need to do is substitute pi over 6 in for the input in my sine series. So sine is uh, alternating signs of odd powers. So it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Uh, minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, and so on. And uh, that's, that's all you need to do there. Um, so um, actually, I, I'm only going to do three terms. Okay, this is, this is called a power series, uh, technically a fifth degree power series, because it goes out to the x to the fifth term. Okay, all I'm going to do is put pi over 6 in here. Uh, so pi over 6 in place of x minus pi over 6 cubed over 3 factorial plus pi over 6 to the fifth power over 5 factorial. And uh, just to save a little bit of time, I've already run this on my calculator. Check this out. Answer is supposed to be 1 half. Okay? The answer is approximately 0 0.50 0 0 0 0 2 1 3. Okay? That's not very much error. That's unbelievably close, okay? Now, that's a, a very small value, and, and you know sometimes you have to write out more terms. Uh, but the point here is very often, three, four, five terms can give you something that's very accurate, okay? Uh, if you had a computer 
run this. A computer can very easily cycle through these different values here. Um, a computer can take the sign function out to 10, 20, 30 decimal places of accuracy, no problem. And uh, when you take calculus, you will actually learn ways to be able to figure out uh, kind of a high bound for what the error is. So for example, if your calculator screen has 10 decimal places, you could set it up so the error is going to be something that is no more than 12 decimal places and you know any error would happen off the screen and, and the number that shows up on your calculator is as good as as uh, you know having the exact value so kind of a neat idea kind of a neat application um, and again people sometimes say well you know aren't these really estimations of the series um, but the key is they're estimations that can be extended out to any level of accuracy needed just depending on how many terms you want to go out and uh, that makes these unbelievably powerful um, and again you'll find in, in calculus that in a lot of cases it's tough to work with an e function or it's tough to work with a sine or a cosine function obviously you could use trig identities to generate a tangent or uh, some of the reciprocal functions like secant uh, this a lot of times can take complicated functions and turn them into very basic polynomials. And it's really easy for technology to work with these things. It's very easy algebraically to work with these things and uh, ends up having a lot of powerful uses in a lot of different areas in higher level mathematics, both in calculating values and also in some proof areas. So it's pretty neat stuff, pretty powerful stuff.